You know, uh, if you're a regular listener, Adam and I enjoy actors doing bad accents in films. Yeah, we haven't done it for a while, have we? There's nothing we like more than... Uh, what's his name from Ocean's Eleven? Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle trying to do an English accent. But it's not very often that you get it the other way round, that you find a British accent, a British actor, trying to do an American accent. Right. And uh, having a lot of trouble. And we're not saying it's easy, but it's just in the world of movies where there's massive amounts of money sloshing around. You would have thought, uh, you know, people would try a bit harder. Or you'd just get an American actor. Get an, uh, yeah, an actor of the proper nationality or a really good voice coach or something to avoid uh, this sort of thing happening. O- on the plane, uh, on the way back from one of my recent jaunts, I watched a film called Fool's Gold mm-hmm. with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> And uh, Kate Hudson. Joe, yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm giggling because Joe did a little grin after he said... <laughs> I liked it. Gold. They're all practically naked through the whole thing and it's very sunny. And I don't know really what happened in it, but it was very entertaining. <laughs> uh, but it included Ray Winstones, yeah. Britain's number one hard man and British man pretending to be American. He's done it a, a little bit. He was um, pretending to be American in The Departed Right. Well. Was he doing? Was he making a good fist of it in The Departed? No, he made a no. bad fist. Well, here are some examples of uh, Ray Winstone's... Am I saying his name correctly? Uh, Winston, Winston. Winston, yeah. Of his American accent in the, film's full, in the film Fool's Gold. He plays a kind of barnacled, crusty sailor pirate man mm-hmm. who's forever trying to muscle in on the gold-finding action in the shallow blue waters of the Bahamas. And, <laughs> and this is one of his first attempts at an American accent. Well, Mr. Deeds, I'm always delighted to welcome an entrant into my field, whether it be on land or sea. But I feel I, I need to warn you. There's no way of getting away from treasure once it's fastened itself on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's going for it there. He's going for the Deep South thing, right? Well, I feel like the one. There's no way of violence. But it keeps slipping. What's it's this? too much of a stretch. He's like tied with a rubber band vocally to the East End or exactly. wherever he's yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. And he keeps boinging back there. Listen to it happen in this second excerpt. Well, sir, I was just going to set off some charges and take a look. You might want to ease back a ways just in case we accidentally scratch your finish. Scratch your finish. <laughs> yeah, because we accidentally scratch your fish. It just plonks right back into the East End at the end there. <laughs> That's amazing. And, well, it gets worse than that. This is the worst one Who I could find. Who directed this film? I don't know. I'm not sure it was directed. <laughs> they just all <laughs> improvised it. But here's Ray's final and most glorious attempt at, at being American. Who the hell set off that charge? There's a man down there. Anybody going to kill that boy? It's going to be me. It's going to be me. Anybody going to kill that boy? It's going to be me. How much do we know about uh, the character, Ray's character? Not much. (laughs) So we know that he's American. He doesn't talk about where I came from. No, those are his three scenes. Right. I I just played you everything he does (laughs) in the film. Honestly, I pretty much did. (laughs) 